Introducing In Hereford and Worcester With Andrew Marston don't forget, you can get in touch anytime you like by visiting our website. Just go along to bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introducing. There's all the contact us links there on the right-hand side. Now, a Worcester filmmaker has launched a new series looking at music production in the county. Jim Lowe's series on the record documents what life's like on the road for our local industry professionals. This week, we go behind the scenes at the Mars Bar in Worcester and meet sound engineer James Willis. I had all intention to go off to university after that, but then I started doing some work at the Mars Bar, and I learned so much more by doing it than being at college. How, how did you get that job at the Mars Bar? I started working behind the bar because they were looking for bar staff. I used to go down to the jam night every Wednesday. I was studying music technology, so I would just kind of shadow the engineers that were there at the time. Because some nights I imagine you go out, it's a job, you go back home and think, God, that was a bit of a waste of time, or that's done nothing for me at all. But there must be some times where you go, I love this job on nights like this. So I, I find myself doing that a lot of time. I love my work. Uh, I think I've got the best job in the world. <laughs> I don't often go home thinking that was a waste of time. Right. <sighs> it's working with great musicians. It doesn't matter what the music is. The whole joy of sound engineering is producing a great sound. If they're great musicians, my job just feels so easy. When you're at your best is when no one notices you're there. If you notice the sound engineer, there's probably something wrong. I think the most important member of the band is the drummer, closely followed by the bass player. You can have the best guitarist in the world, the best keyboard player, the best singer. But if the drummer and the bass player aren't very good, the band sounds terrible. On the flip side of that, I've seen bands where the drummer's been really great, the bass player's been really great, but the other people aren't as technically gifted, but they still sound like a great band. It's all about how tight the sound is. You can tell when a band's been playing together for a long time, it's just become natural to them. They don't have to be paying attention to the drummer to keep in time, they just know, it just all clicks into place. So when people like some of the loudest bands in the world go out like the Who or um, like they Black Sabbath, Ozzy Osbourne, you always hear Ozzy Osbourne, yeah, it's yeah. fantastic for it's only or Led Zeppelin and Robert Band. What do they do? Because Well, a lot they... of the times the stage is the biggest, the drums right. further away. Choice of microphone as well. So lots of advice there from a sound engineer's perspective. In a short while, we'll be hearing from uh, Willis, who will kind of uh, explain a little bit about how you can promote yourself and uh, what the local scene's like at the moment. But uh, it continued by explaining all about what happened to metal bands. I think there's less metal bands because there's less metal promoters. Right. There's far more solo acts and acoustic acts than there were five, six years ago because there's so many people putting on open mic nights. People just want to play, so they'll play. A lot of the times when they're young, they'll play with whatever kind of music will get them a gig. What a lot of people are doing are putting their music on iTunes and Spotify and things, and that's great, but you need to promote it as well. That's virtually impossible to do in a DIY way. I think. You have to pay for promotion, which they can cost them anywhere between £1,000 and £2,000. But if you get the money together, it's possible to self-release things and do quite well. I think a good local example of that is Howard James Kenny. He self-released his album, and because of that, he managed to get a booking agent. And then he managed to get on all these great tours, and all these great supports, and he's constantly playing around the UK. And he sold loads of copies of the album, and does really well. He made that money back, that investment, that just over a thousand pounds investment back, really quick. There's great local bands, but sometimes they play two or three times a month. Why should I come and see you again? You know, I get the feeling that a lot of gigs, that people just will go support them, but then spend most of the time drinking and chatting. You get one promoter, and he's got a bunch of friends, and then he'll put on a night, and then he'll put on a, another night with a different list of bands, but then he'll third show will just be the other bands again, and like a mix match of that. So then you get you just get promoters putting on the same bands in each. You don't get much crossover. Why is it acceptable for musicians to have to pay to go and play such places? They're the worst places. You've got to avoid them. You have to put a deposit down, and if you don't get a certain amount of people through the door, you don't get your money back or you won't get paid. If I wanted to play in front of all my friends, I'd just stay at 
in Worcester and do that, why would I bring them all to London? That's not the point. I'm coming to the, your place to play for the different people. Your job title is a promoter, so promote it. Some people are there. Some great advice there from James Willis, the sound engineer at the Mars Bar, and you can catch the whole On The Record series online. we put a link as well from our website, so if you visit bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introducing, you'll find a track listing for tonight's programme alongside all of our features and links to where you can go and get more information. Listen to the best interviews online. bbc.co.uk slash Hereford and Worcester slash introducing. introducing.